Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 6th of January here in 2022. We got our pullback, we got the snapback, and the dominant thesis took place. We were grossly overextended. That's on the daily chart right here. This is the hourly chart right there. Into the 4,800 for the S&P and the probabilities certainly favored the pullback, but didn't guarantee it. But we got it, and that was on the Fed Minutes news. Nevertheless, we got the rubber band snapback, and that led to some profitable short-term short positions. That one includes some of the stocks, including Microsoft, which was up into this 335 level at the end of the year, and that played down to the midpoint. That's 330, and all the way down to the bottom, and we're making new lows as we start 2022. And that is under the 320 per share level. So while we're on the topic of the big monsters of tech, we'll take a look at Apple. And its uptrend continued until the rubber band snapback. So just for definitions, as a trend continues, it tends to make higher highs and higher lows. So any particular uptrend looks like that. There's all kinds of ways to define that. Moving averages, linear regression, or just drawing trend lines. But markets don't go straight up. When they do, it's actually a rarity. These little moves are not the norm. What's the norm is the normal give and take or push and pull or waves or swings. So what goes up must come down. What goes down generally comes back up. What goes up, we can see it here on the hourly chart. Here's the daily chart. What goes up tends to come back down. So here is your what we'll call high to low, that's there. Low to high, that's there. And then recently high to low. So that's just playing off in Apple. And we're starting again. 2022 at new lows for the year not for the last year but for the few days that we've been trading in this new year outside of that we'll look at amazon no surprise here that amazon's trading down under this 3300 level and that will be the key pivot on a short term because that's a prior low and failing to hold this 3300 since the share price as strange as it may sound 100 dollars down to that 3200. Facebook is another stock that had a sharper pullback. Again, this is what I was referring to a little earlier in terms of the higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. That's a little strange. Higher high, higher low, all the pullbacks and the retracements of a trend, but trends don't last forever. They end on breakouts, and that tends to reverse the trends. Moving averages failed, and everything else went to the downside too. But for shares of Facebook and traders short term, that's my world, it's very short term scalping, not playing too far out in the duration world. We have this established, think Microsoft, think Apple and other stocks, lows and highs. And for Facebook, that's just about 310 and 350. And that midpoint's about 330, but that's in Facebook, their shares. So outside of that, we'll look at Google, which had a much deeper pullback. And that is looking similar to the NASDAQ. So for the most part, the big monsters of tech, the big tech names, Google particularly, has had a sideways trading range. And that has led to short-term trading, trades or trades, traders, in both direction. The shorts or the overbought opportunities have taken place against 3,000 per share. Underneath that's about 2,800 and the midpoint or think about fair value. If you think reversion to the mean, this is above the mean, this is the mean or the average, and that is below the mean. Midpoint's about 2,900 in Google. Let's pull to the NASDAQ right now. That's NASDAQ. The NASDAQ similarly, as we discussed in Apple and Microsoft and the other companies in the monsters attack, has itself been in a trading range. Now keep this in mind as we talk about the NASDAQ on the short term. This trading range in the NASDAQ is about 16,600 and about 15,500, making the midpoint, what we call a roundy here in Theo Trade, at about 16,000. That's the midpoint or short term fair valuation for the NASDAQ. Keep that in mind as we look at the Dow, which has traded down from its new all time high. And that was Tuesday's video with us here in Theo Trade for me in the evening video. That was a new all-time high. Absolutely was. 
But if you look beneath the surface and the headlines and the news reports, there was a lot of moving pieces and a lot of bearish signals that said that was not necessarily to be believed. And now we look two days in the future, which is Thursday, back down the markets are. And it was a tough fall for these shares. And for the Russell, I mentioned to keep that range logic in mind for the NASDAQ because the Russell, there's no trend there. The trend is sideways, but that actually is a trend. When markets go sideways, they established buy zones and sell zones at that fair valuation. If that looks like a lot of chop, it is a lot of chop, but that defines the risk and the parameters of potential short-term trades. Again, selling up against this 23 or 2325 area and buying at this 21, 25 or so. Not playing what I would call low to high, but playing to the midpoint, because that is in general mean reversion. And mean reversion is a general un unifying or united way to think about the markets. If we think about a bell curve or distribution, if that's the middle or the average, the mean right in the middle, this is above, this is beneath. And nothing really goes into the fundamentals here, just looking at short-term price levels and targets to set up trades. Trades are just probability outcomes. They are not anything more than that. And that's the broader markets. Outside of those, we can take a look at crude oil. And that's been a little bit on the bull side or the bounce side outside the equity futures, which have traded down. So in an inflationary environment, that's the concern. That's the Fed raising rates. Inflation is a bigger concern. Housing prices up more than expected and all the things that go into inflation, crude oil could be part of that scenario. And it is actually drifting up at the same time the S&P is going lower. Nonetheless, the trend, a little cleaner trend perhaps, is higher highs and higher lows. We can even define it as a broader range. And I like the ranges. That's 65 to 85, making the midpoint right here at 75. Gold has had a long term, really a full year of a trading range. And remember, all this goes into the same context. When the S&P has been straight up, just about, gold has been sideways. Crude oil has, we just saw that, been uptrending for the most part of the last year. Gold hasn't. In fact, in our end of year video, Gold was one of the only markets with the bond market, the prices, that is, TLT and the bonds, they were down on the year, not by much, but they were still negative. And that's in a rising interest rate or rising inflation environment. Once again, the trades set up as mean reversion. Midpoint tends to be about 1820, 1830. Top of the range tends to be about 1900. And the lower bound of the range is about 1750. Again, little spread trades or buy opportunities take place in the lows of the range that is considered under fair valuation. And if ever the price gets there, 1900 was the last opportunity that actually favors the sell side. My preference is to go back to the mean. So any particular short-term trade scalp or trade opportunity would just take you not low to high, but low to mid or undersold back to fair valuation. And of course we can look at in and in this video tonight, looking at the bonds and I like to look at and sometimes trade into TLT. That's our bond ETF. That also like gold has remained in a sideways trading range with opportunities to sell above the mean. And again, the mean is about 147 and that upper spot 152, lower bound 142. What does that mean right now? Unless bonds break to the downside, that will be a breakout. Low probability, but certainly possible. The next move for bonds could be to the upside. And that could target 147. But that same logic plays not just here, but in individual stocks we just saw. Mean reversion. No bull, no bear. Just playing back to fair valuation and using horizontal price levels to gauge probabilities and therefore short-term trades. As always, be careful and safe in this new year, new environment. Volatility is kicking off 2022, and it's a little exciting, but does increase the risk. This is Corey Rosen with tonight's CEO video update for January 6th, 2022.